Good morning. Uh, this morning, I have the pleasure of speaking with John Swab. He is the director of a very, very interesting and impactful film, Body Brokers. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? So what, what's interesting about this film, I, I'm sorry, you, I'm doing great. <laughs> I just want to get right into it. Yeah, great, go ahead. Um, so it, it, what's interesting about this particular sensitive topic is until I got an email regarding the trailer for your film, I had no idea something like this was going on. Uh, so it was very eye-opening for me because it's messed up. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's that's most people's reaction. Um, unless it's happened to you, you had no idea it was happening. Uh, you know, a lot of addicts that go to treatment are um, kind of shoved in the closet away from their loved ones. And, you know, when things happen to them like this, their loved ones don't have any uh, incentive to believe them because they've been drug addicts for so long. So, uh, you know, most people are unaware this is going this is happening right now in the treatment industry unless it's happened to them. So tell us a little bit about the film, about the premise of it, and then we'll get a little bit more into the, the background. Uh, yeah, it's about a kid named Utah who is struggling with his disease of addiction um, in Ohio. Um, he and his girlfriend are living in motels. They're committing crimes um, and they come across a kind of a drifter like character named Wood played by Michael K. Williams who was actually a uh, recruiter or a body broker for a treatment center in Los Angeles. And uh, he recruits Utah to go to treatment under the premise of getting better. Um, but quickly we find out that this is all just a big uh, money insurance fraud scheme. So now, it seems like a really, uh, I, I would say complicated film to put together because you're not just making a movie about these characters, but you're also adding a lot of, of of elements of a documentary i really like that about it the fact that throughout the film i'm getting a little bit of facts about what's really going on so yes we're, we're seeing this depiction of it but also this here are some numbers to go along with it can you talk about putting all that together yeah it was tough i mean you know we uh a lot of the movies that i kind of used as a template are like uh the big short or vice or thank you for smoking and you know um we were making this movie with about a hundredth of the budget of those films. So, you know, to, it's a, it's a really delicate line to try and balance uh, when you're, when you're kind of trying to balance between telling a narrative story and then also giving a lot of real life facts and numbers and keep the audience engaged and up to speed um, without overwhelming them. So, you know, um, it was tough to kind of figure out how to do best, but I'm, I'm proud with how we did it. It, it definitely came out great. I really enjoyed it. Can, can you talk about a little bit about people's reactions that they might have, especially them who have loved ones that are going through this and are going circle almost around and around in the system? Uh, you know, that's kind of been the most um, gratifying part of all this uh, is since the trailer's release, um, there's been countless families um, and individuals who have reached out to my producer and I and, you know, thanked us for telling this story because nobody believed them that it's happened or, or you know you know even last night we were at dinner and a father of a kid uh who passed away um in the treatment center or system in california reached out and he was very upset um that this story was being portrayed until he realized that it had happened to me um so i was coming at it from an honest place so i mean that kind of stuff is really you know um what's most exciting uh, about the film is that you know there's a lot of people out there that it can hopefully help or bring some kind of closure to or uh you know validate their story in a way so no i'm sorry you're saying that you you went through a similar experience yourself yeah so this is it's by and large a, like an uh an autobiographical account of what happened with me um i did a lot of treatment a lot of time in treatment um, was brokered and, and helped broker people. Um, and so this is all based on firsthand experience for myself or people that I know. So what kind of emotional toll does that take on you to, to work on a film like this? Uh, it was strange. Um, you know, it, it was, it didn't take an emotional toll in terms of, uh, 
how to direct the actors or how to you know communicate with them what's going on or how to feel um but you know going to old places where i had uh memories of using drugs um you know we shot in my hometown where i am now in tulsa and we we shot in locations where you know i didn't have the best memories um so going back there and and being able to kind of be in control and uh and with these characters I had written and these fantastic actors playing them, it was really cathartic. Um, so, yeah. So speaking on the actors, can you comment on yeah, like Jack Kilmer's Utah and specifically Alice Englert's uh, Opal who had to portray these characters? Um, yeah, I mean, Jack, Jack's Jack got a uh, an innocence about him and a, kind of a naivete in his eyes that um, really lent itself to Utah. Um, you know, most most people that are trying to get sober in early recovery are are kind of in a daze and kind of not really sure what's going on. And they're kind of overwhelmed by life. And, uh, you know, Jack's got that natural little disposition uh, that that, you know, I think really um, complimented the character of Utah. Well, and Alice was a, a rock star. And, uh, you know, I wasn't too familiar with her work, but I think I was blown away. Um, I knew a lot of people like Alice and there's been a few people that work in the treatment industry that have seen the film who were most taken aback by her because it feels so true to what these, you know, people like her are, you know, really like, so. You can talk about putting together that kind of uh, almost antagonist character like Vin, who's just in the background, just being a puppet master pretty much to all of this. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, Frank is like a, uh, He's like a panther or like a bolt of lightning where like you can't really take your eyes off of him and you never know what he's going to do next. And uh, to kind of give him the power and, and the keys uh, to just run with Vin, this kind of, you know, godlike character um, was a lot of fun. Um, and I think, you know, Vin's character represents capitalism in a way um, as this thing that is sexy and that is, you know, seductive and, uh, but in the wrong hands can be really dangerous. Absolutely. Uh, there's a moment I can't talk about in the film, but uh, I would, I would say that there's a similar one uh, that we learn about quickly uh, when it comes to Michael Kenneth Williams character and how he, as soon as I realized he's more of an enabler than an actual healer, I think that's when the, the film kind of, for me, it, it took a diff different approach and, and all of a sudden it, it just felt very, very uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. There's a scene in the film where they're at a party, and and then he he, right. he asked Utah, and I was that's I was taken back by that. He, you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, um, that is the moment moment in the movie where it really, really turns and where we really understand, you know, what his motives are and what he's about um, or what his character is about. Uh, yeah, I. Michael did such a great job and, and, you know, he's not shy about his personal connection to, you know, the material and the subject matter. Um, so he, it, it, in terms of uh, the way he portrayed that character and the, and the way he chose to kind of, you know, uh, play that scene, that was all him. Um, he understood exactly what was going on and that, that tonal shift and, and, and motive reveal that you talked about, he understood it really well. So I just got out of his way and let him do his thing. But uh, I really, I love that scene. I think it's a great scene. It's beautifully shot. And uh, he, he does a fantastic job. Oh, as I'm watching the film, uh, you could correct me maybe if I, if I got the wrong take on it, but I felt it was really intimate. I felt all your scenes were a little, uh, so much uh, character focused and, and not necessarily like a, like a grand scheme of things, but, focusing on on these people and, and their issues and and maybe how it can be relatable to to so many others is it was that intentional to to make it very very personal yeah well i mean it, it it's a personal story you know and i think um for the people that have been through this they will relate to it because of how personal it feels and uh that was the tough toughest part about the movie was was making a very personal story um in the narrative um Part of things and then bouncing over to this you know narration by Vin's character Frank's character and kind of explaining the whole world of treatment so while giving like a like a aerial view but also like a very very personal on the ground view it was a tough balance but um I wanted people to uh to feel like they were in treatment and I think 
in those scenes. I mean, they're long, they're drawn out. Uh, and that's how treatment is. It's, it's cold and lonely and uh, there's not a lot happening. So, you know, I think, uh, I guess, judging by the way you reacted, we did a good job with that. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah actually, that was one of the things I really caught on to was, was just how slow the treatment phase of it felt. But as I'm watching it, I realized it's supposed to feel this way. Mm -hmm. I can't, I couldn't even imagine how frustrating something like that would be. Right. Uh, did We talked a little bit about, you know, I mentioned the praise that the film has got. Have you got any backlashes from, backlash from any uh, centers or any anybody who thinks that maybe you're looking at it the wrong way? I'm sure, um, you know, but that's what's that's so exciting about this movie. And, and when I finished writing it, I, I sent it to uh, my producer, Jeremy and, and Melissa, Leo, and both, you know, nobody had really heard this side of the argument. And I think that's what's really, really exciting about the film is that, you know, I see there's two movies every year that come out about recovery or drugs or whatever. And being, some, being someone who's in recovery or who's, you know, been a drug addict, most of those movies are totally full of shit. And, you know, they don't really tell you the truth. They kind of give you a bunch of fluff and then send you on your way and you know you kind of feel good about what you watched but none of them really like hit you with the hard truth that you know the success rate is under 10 percent, and um most of these people die you know and so we were really excited about you know being honest and truthful to that part of the process is that you know th these people aren't making that alive so so what is your biggest takeaway um now that it's all said and done uh my biggest takeaway is that you know, in the state of California, you need more certification to uh, to cut hair than to run a treatment center and own a treatment center. So the oversight and uh, and laws that kind of govern the treatment center are archaic, and they need to be looked at. And you know, we need healthcare providers or like and healthcare workers and people that are trained and educated to be in positions to, you know, dictate what happens to these people that finally get the courage to ask for help. Um, so my biggest takeaway is that, you know, the system's flawed and until the system's fixed, you know, there's going to be problems and people are going to be losing their lives. John, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Thank you so much for the film. I think it's fantastic. I know that I've already had a couple of family members reaction where they reacted, uh, uncomfortably, but it's because of the familiarity to the situation. So it's, it's, well, thank you very it's much. done well. Uh, so much. can you tell us where we can find the film? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can find it uh, on all digital platforms um, and VOD this Friday. Um, so, you know, get out there and rent it. Thank you. 100%. Again, thank you, John. I hope you have a good one. You too. All right, take care.